doubt. I've been smoking no cigars. Mr. Khalifa, how are you? What's up, big dog? What's up, my boy? How you been? Long time. I know, right? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Bro, you didn't. You, your hair didn't got long. What you been? What, you, what kind of oils you using? Juicing those berries? Using that that black seed oil, man. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about, man? So tell me, man. Yeah, how's, how's daddy life now? Son getting big. It's cool as heck, yo. That's literally like my best friend. That's the homie, bro. Right. I know we talked last yeah, time. Yeah. We were just always talking about just like family life and, and just being a father, period, and how much love and, and, and just a, a son to give you, your child give you, and how fathers need to definitely be in your life, man. Give me some moments you and your, you and your son enjoy together, man. It's fun uh, jumping in the pool, of course. We kick it, you know what I mean? We work out together. I think it's just good having him wanting to do everything that I do. So if right. I'm in the studio, he wouldn't be in the studio. If I'm, you know, watching quarantine radio, he wouldn't watch girls twerk. You know what okay. I mean? How, how is that going? How is that keeping his eyes off that? I, he keeps his eyes on it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we got we got blame Terry for that one, dog. For real, for real. I don't even I don't even care. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like. I look at dancing and I look at women's bodies as art, you know, and right. I want to teach my son early to value a woman's body and value what she does. So even if she does dance for money, she's working, you know what right. I mean? And she's getting her money and it's a respect thing. So to teach him that other than, uh, you know, have the sexual thing involved in it, I feel like that's more my responsibility as a dad. Okay, no, 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 no. Yeah. So, okay, so tell me this. Are you kept on this? Because some people do it, some people don't. What about smoking around your kid? Do you smoke? Uh, I live kid? in LA, so I could do exactly what I want right. to do. I wouldn't advise anybody else who doesn't live where it's legal to do that because, especially if you're not, you know, if your family situation, because you don't want anybody going back and telling and you getting in trouble. Or, because actual smoking isn't bad. The inhalation of the smoke is. Mm -hmm is difficult for some people to understand around children. Right. So I don't advocate anything, but I live in LA, so I could do exactly what I want to do. Right. So speaking of smoking, you you were definitely one of the pioneers of having your own cush, your own brand since mm -hmm. it's 420. Did you ever think like the, the cannabis industry would grow like this, like would be this big? Honestly, nah, man. Like um, I've seen it develop into what it is now. And I literally come from the days where you got to buy a sack right. of weed every day from, from the homie, you know what I mean? Right. And those and to go from that to, to dispensaries being open in the pandemic where they're saying weed is an essential business, um, I've never seen it developing into that or uh, even helping as many people as it, as it has. I never knew that it was going to be um, what it is today. No, nah, no. Nope. Right. Mm. So, so what about what about um, business? Are you open, thinking about any like any ventures as far as opening up any dispensaries and stuff like that? I haven't gone into opening dispensaries because uh, just with the whole branding and how things are going, especially with now, uh, everything is so up and down, man. And it's hard to gauge where we're going to be at in the next five years. Right. So, just playing my position and being in a, a good space and a smart space is what I'm more concerned about other than making moves that I'm going to have to double back on later. Right. Facts, 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 facts. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this new album, Saga of Wiz Khalifa, man. Why that name? Why the Saga of Wiz Khalifa? Uh, it's called the Saga of Wiz Khalifa because a saga is an eventful story. It, uh, it takes a long time to explain. So uh, this is chapter one. Of course, there's going to be a chapter two and, you know, maybe even more installments after that. Well, actually, there is more installments after that. Fuck it. I, I, I'm not even going to lie. Because <laughs> the saga is continuous. Yeah, you talking but, about uh, But this first one, um, it's, it's, these are songs that I really cared about, that I really took a lot of care, uh, a lot of, a lot of care of and put a lot of attention to. And uh, I put them out for the fans. I feel like the fans deserve some bangers. They deserve some heat. Um, I do a lot of different – I'm very versatile – so I could have went really organic or I could have went really futuristic, but I just stayed in the pocket and right. just delivered seven bangers that I know people's going to eat up. I got some monster features on there. Meg the Stallion. Come on now. Uh, Ty Dolla Sign. Uh, Tyga, of course. Tyga, of course. Uh, K Camp. Mm. Uh, Mustard. People be sleeping on Camp, man. I've been nah, trying to Camp, with camp Camp's five. a G. And uh, with the features, these are all people that I have really good uh, relationships, with. relationships with. These are my people. So 
they're not, of course, you know, people are going to gravitate towards them because of their features and because of what they do. But at the end of the day, these are, these, this is the team that I trusted to put this project together to make it super dope for the fans. Right. I definitely got to salute you because just speaking of team, like, I'm hearing, like, you got really some of the main guys that have been with you since the beginning. A lot of these artists, like, tend to clip cop and you see him on one tour, then next tour, they got a whole different crew. Like, what's been the, the thing that jail that keeps your whole crew together, man? Uh, mainly my concern is that everybody eats. Um, right. You know, right. Uh, everybody doesn't want to be the biggest superstar in the world. Right. Uh, but we all going to eat. So whether it's production, whether it's camera work, whether it's management, uh, whatever it is, I want to see people be their absolute best and I want to bring the best out of them while okay. I'm trying to be my best. So throughout these projects, I don't know how many I've dropped in the 15 years that I've been in the game. You, you, but, you've been doing your thing now. Yeah, I mean, throughout these projects, I've built a really, really strong inner circle of people that I could trust and that I could call, you know, in the moments that I need them. And that's been, that was really vital for this project because, you know, I had to keep my head in the game the entire way through. Anybody who knows me knows how self-sufficient I am. So there's right. nobody running things and making it happen for me. There's a lot of people that I sit down with and that I respect their opinion. Uh, shout out to Mike Karen, shout out to Marsha, shout out to Will, shout out to my engineer Aaron. There's a lot of different people who um, who we get together and we come up with these visions together. Right. You know what I mean? Whether it's them bringing their side, shout out to my management, Smack, uh, their side, what they think I should do, or whether it's me saying what I uh, think should happen. It's a collective, you know what I mean? And it right. took a lot of time to build that collective in this project is a result of that collective. No, I definitely got to salute that, man. So let's talk yeah. about this, this contact feature in Tiger, man. I know you and Tiger been, been rocking for a little minute, man. Seven, 7.1 million in three weeks, still yeah. doing numbers. What, yep. what, like, how do you can continuously keep this core fan base, this dope fan base to stay with you? You can take off for a year, take off for two years, drop a project and it's still the same support, still the same Taylor Gang love. Like, how do you do that? It's almost like a rock star, like, like like fan base you got going on because a lot of rappers they be off them by the by the, by, the, by the summertime. You drop right. a record in January, they ain't, they don't even call you. They're not even fan of yours by the summertime. So how do yeah. you keep that core fan base tight and, and, and keep beating them? Honestly, it's just uh, staying solid with them and and figuring out what they what they like and what they love. Um, right. I I don't move. I mean, you know, ninety percent off of the way that I move is just what I want to do and what I think is cool. And that other 10% is a really, really big trust of the people who I'm making it for. And I trust them to put me in the right direction and to make what's for them. Um, yeah, and, and they always let me know, you know what I mean? So what's the key to timeless music? Because cause like, I, you know what, when I first got on you, it was that paper plane. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just listen to this record right now. It still sound like right now. Like, yeah, yeah. how the hell you dropped this record this long ago and it still sound like right now? I think that the key to timeless music to me is, is the production, bro. Mm. Um, I've been rocking with a lot of the same producers since I started my career, you know, since I was 15, 16 years old. And that's another thing when it comes to trust. Uh, I trust them musically the same way people trust me lyrically. So without that combination, you wouldn't have that timeless music. So did you ever know, like, when Paper Planes, when this record dropped? Was that record came out, did you ever think that you would be where you at right now? Yeah, you could, you could listen to, you could listen to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, t I'm talking about all of it. And literally, I know, when you know, I say, I sometimes you, you foresee it and you say it. Like people say a lot of things, which you know, everybody say I want to do this, I want to do that. But for actually to come, you know, what I'm saying, full fledged, and it's right here in your face. Like, how did that feel, like? Honestly, like in that song, I'm saying um, they gonna miss this plane. Like I'm referring to myself. Like if people did, like at that time, I felt like a lot of people didn't understand me. Right. But that didn't mean that I wasn't going gonna get to where I was going. Right. It's like you're gonna miss out if you don't catch this plane. Like mm. I'm out. <laughs> right. So I was, I was, I was saying it because I see it in my head, and that was just for that project. I was so confident in that project and where that would take me. Of course, I didn't see, you know, further projects or, you know, being number one or having multi-platinum records. I don't right. I don't see that. I just look at each project and each situation and how confident I am in the moment and what I know I'm going to do. 
And yeah, I knew I was gonna fuck shit up. And like, it's <laughs> the same way. It's the same way now. It's the same confidence now. I feel the exact same way. And I'm talking the same shit. It's just this, the 2020 version of it. And you know, we just manifesting really uh, more more great moments for everybody. Facts. How, how's what Cliff is spending these uh, these quarantine days? You know what I'm saying? It's quarantine time. Uh, a lot of family time. You know, me and my son, uh, and my 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 uh, inner circle, my immediate circle. Um, a lot of weed getting smoked, a lot of movies <laughs> getting watched. This project was developed, you know, the last the last end of the project. It was kind of weird being in the house and having to do that because I didn't have all of the resources that I wanted. Right. But it made me, you know, get creative and be able to still uh, roll the project out the way that I wanted to. So shout out to everybody on my team who came through last minute and really made this thing special. Uh, working out, of course, I haven't been uh, training martial arts as much, but I've still been lifting weights and sticking to my diet. Okay. Dope, pretty, dope, dope. So what, what's your diet consist of, just for the people that's trying to, um, you know what I mean, shed a couple pounds? You know, I've been in the gym trying to lose these oh, man I'm, boots I'm, and yeah, stuff. I'm gaining weight, bro. I'm putting okay. on weight. You're yeah, trying to be big, so big, I, big Khalifa. It's much, a process, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> how much are you trying to put on, bro? I already gained 40 pounds. Damn, where's where yeah, I've been, yeah. man? Yeah, yo. You only got, you ain't gonna need security in a minute, bro. You can walk around by yourself, like just. I mean, broadly. security is to make sure people stay safe. So I'm right. always going to need security. Okay, but as far you. as like physical confrontation, I haven't had Unboxed. to worry about that in 15 years. So that's not what I'm doing it for. Right, facts, 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 facts. But definitely, all salute to you, salute to you, man. Oh yeah, one more question: How much, how much smoke is, how much weed is getting smoked in quarantine days a day at this point? Honestly, well, we've been in quarantine for about, a month now. About a month, yep. I smoked three pounds in the, in the in a month. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Three pounds, bro? Yeah, is this yeah. thing sharing with people or is this just this weird? Nah, this I'm not thing. sharing with nobody. You serious? <laughs> Golly. Okay, yeah, I got to catch up. I got I to catch up, do some push-ups, get my lungs together. I'm right, until I see you again, my brother. Until I see you again, salute to you and everything you got going on. I definitely yeah, got to like, like I said, I've seen you grow. Like, you're an amazing father. Definitely a good dude. Definitely a good role model. How do you handle your business? How you just stay out of the tabloids? I don't ever hear no bullshit about Wiz. I don't hear no Wiz got this girl calling this and calling that, leaking videos and text messages. So I definitely got to salute to you, bro. Appreciate you too, man. Thank you for staying solid and always supporting the music. You know, man. always 1,000, brother. Wiz Khalifa, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? The saga Wiz Khalifa is out right right now. Go get that uh, go get that contact. Go get the album. And rock yeah. out, man. Going down. Salute. Yep. Taylor Gang, GD.